as an accountant and as an analyst also all of us need to know accounting principles accounting standards and reporting standards now the question first question that may come to your mind and should come to your mind is all these three are different or same and let us explore accounting principles accounting standards and reporting standards now you as an accountant or analyst have already heard about and surely know about ifrs so ifrs stands for international financial reporting standards so this rs stands for reporting standards and they are international reporting standards so this term we have taken from here and in comparison to that in us uh, uh, we use generally accepted accounting principles so this word ap stands for accounting principles so this word has come or this term has come from here and some countries have their own country specific accounting standards uh, like indian accounting standards so this term accounting standards has come from here so these terms have been used interchangeably by different countries so accounting principles like us gap accounting standards like indian accounting standards reporting standards like international fin financial reporting standards so they are sort of doing the same thing so that is why these three terms first of all we must understand can be used interchangeably and let us now understand that okay what is the importance of what is the significance of knowing accounting principles standards and reporting standards for you as an accountant or for you as a as an analyst so let us start with a very lightweight definition of accounting principles so as per investopedia accounting principles are the rules and guidelines that companies must follow when reporting financial data it means that if you are reporting some financial data like you are reporting financial data through income statement or balance sheet or statement of shareholders equity or cash flow statement then there are certain rules then there are certain guidelines that you must follow not just in reporting not just in reporting but also in preparation of those financial statements if you have to follow certain rule, rules and guidelines those rules and guidelines that you follow in preparation of those financial statements and then reporting those financial statements and then uh, analyzing those financial statements those are those rules and guidelines are called accounting principles and the same is uh, clear from this definition from cfa institute which is giving definition with regard to or in reference of uh, generally accepted accounting principles uh, which are also known as uh, us gap so even there they say that these are uh, uh, generally accepted accounting principles or accounting principles in general are commonly followed accounting rules and standards for financial reporting so this is more or less the same thing that we studied earlier having said that there is one more thing probably we can add here and that is that when we are following accounting standards there are broadly two approaches right so one is to have those standards which are more like a rule based standards so if we talk of uh, us gap then the us generally accepted accounting standards uh, us generally accepted accounting principles they are more like rule based and we will get to know more about rule based later uh, in upcoming uh, learnings but here another approach is 
that we may either have rule based or we may have principle based accounting standards or financial reporting standards. So the second category is principle based. So for example, uh, when we go into details, which we will do in upcoming learnings, these international financial reporting standards, they broadly are constituted and treated as uh, like principle based. So the question is, since accounting standards are becoming more and more complex and they are is not so easy to understand, the question is whether we should have rule based accounting standards or principle, principle based accounting standard. This is actually another dimension that needs to be explored. But for the time being, let us take one example. So let us talk of this going concern standard or convention, I should say. So going concern. So we assume while preparing financial statements that this business will be a going on concern. It would be a company that will continue its operations and would survive in a foreseeable future. Now the question, now the question arises, how long in future? So it will be going on concern. Yes, we understand, but how long in future? So whether it will be one year or it will be five years or it will be indefinite period of time, right? So this is not clear from general convention and these rules can differ from various counting standards that you are following. So if you are in IFRS category, right? international financial reporting standards if you are following if you are one of those countries then you have a different understanding of going on concern if you are under us gap if you are a us public company and following us gaps you have a different understanding so uh, let us explore actually this one and upon research i found that with respect to going on concern there are certain differences between IFRS and US CAP and US CAP is more specific and it assumes that in particular the assessment period under US CAP is one year after the date that financial statements are issued and US GAAP sets out detailed guidelines on liquidation basis of accounting. So which basically means that US GAAP under US GAAP if you are accountant or analyst for you the going concern means that you think oh yeah in one year in the next year so the business is likely to continue. Moreover management also has the uh, liability or has the responsibility to mitigate and reduce the risk of entity's ability to continue as going on concern. So if management thinks that its uh, ability to continue or as a going on concern has reduced and then it must take all the efforts to manage the risk and make sure that those risk factors are minimized and uh, the going on concern ability of the organization or the company is restored or kind of maximized and the risk is minimized. So to so to summarize it, uh, going on concern as per US GAAP means the company's ability to continue as a going on concern for one year after the date of financial statements. And in general features of IFRS, uh, I found that going concern was more like company is likely to continue its operations for a foreseeable future. So there is no one year limit specified in IFRS to constitute the definition of going on concern. So here if we see 
that the same convention the same principle going on concern has been interpreted differently in a fris international financial reporting standard which is more broader one which says okay company is likely to continue in foreseeable future whereas the us cap is more specific for it going on concern means one year expectation to continue for one year after preparation of financial statement and if it is not so then liquidation mode has to be triggered so this way we have seen that standards are either more like a principle based the broader one right uh, which have the broader view broader perspective or they are more like rule based which have a very specific perspective and uh, later on we will uh, in upcoming learning talk about rule based and uh, uh, principle based uh, application or implications of accounting standards for sure at this point we can say that if you are an analyst if you are an accountant if you are concerned with analysis of the financial statement or you are concerned with the preparation of the financial statements you need to have understanding of the accounting standards and principles and you are likely to fall in one of the three categories if you are a us public company you will be uh, most likely following us cap uh, or if you are one of those countries who follow international financial reporting standards uh, like canada and other countries uh, so there are uh, almost 166 countries that follow ifris uh, then you have to understand uh, these uh, and uh, then do accounting and analysis accordingly and if you are in countries like india where there are country specific accounting standards which are called ind ass which means indian accounting standard then you have to know those so it is uh, more like uh, you have to fall in one of these categories whether you follow country specific accounting standards or you follow us cap or you follow ifris right so it also actually opens up a very broader discussion uh, it throws a new uh, issue to us that accounting standards uh, they are not universal rather these are generally accepted not universally accept so we will talk more about this actually in the upcoming learning see you later